Hello, welcome to Conversations at the Whole Notes. This is David Perlman, and I'm here with Stuart Goodyear, back again. It's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure to have you here. And uh, it's uh, August the 19th, 2015. You're in Toronto for a couple more days? A couple more, um, yeah, actually until tomorrow. <laughs> and and then, then I have a little holiday in Europe, and then I come back here again. Uh-huh. So summer has not been a holiday exactly. Well, summer has been a delightfully busy time. Um, a beautiful Canadian summer. Oh, um, yeah. A lot of um, Canadian festivals. Um, first one being the Alora Festival, where right. I celebrated um, Scriabin Centennial. Right. And uh, as well as an old Scriabin program that celebrated each different chapters of Scriabin's life. Uh -huh. um, the etudes, um, the 12 etudes with a famous G-sharp minor um, etude at the end, mm -hmm. he wrote in, in his early 20s. The sonatas, the sixth and seventh sonatas, I, I, I enjoy both and I love the history behind those sonatas. The sixth sonata, of course, was the demonic one right. that Scriabin uh, was absolutely petrified of, uh, of and never programmed it, uh, never performed it live. I think he, uh, he was at a party somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he performed the first four or five bars, and, he, um, and the, his whole body quivered, apparently, and, wow. um, and then he couldn't play anymore. So, so in order to exercise the demons of the sixth yeah. and out, he wrote the seventh, white, uh, entitled White Mass, uh -huh. and I, I call it the exorcist. And it's almost as if um, <laughs> um, there's this battle between the exorcist and the demons, and finally there's um, yeah. this whole wash of sound, there's this huge chord, I think uh, uh, the chord um, has maybe 25 notes in it, and then suddenly that's when the spirit either flies up to wherever. Mm -hmm. And so um, I played both sonatas, uh, Vers la Flamme ended the program, so um, it was a wonderful project. It was my first time performing Scriabin, and um, it will definitely not be the last. And that was all in one program? That was all in one program, yes. You have an appetite for big programs. I have an appetite. I'm almost like uh, like a music gourmet. I just love innovation mm -hmm. and uh, as as a composer, just how these um, masterpieces come up and the history b behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always intrigued by that. And mm -hmm. every program I have, I think, is always from a composer's point of view and mm -hmm. just my love of those pieces. I remember you talking once before when you were doing um, Messiaen um, Les Oiseaux about, about needing to go out and actually listen to every single bird sound that was incorporated in that was, the music. That was the only way to do it, to yeah. just get the rhythm, because you know, on one hand, you know, the rhythms are approximate, but when you hear yeah. um, someone like Yvon Loriot do it, mm -hmm. and that is not even you know, you know, you know, uh, one eighth of the puzzle, that's one interpretation. Right. But just going out there and just knowing firsthand where, oh, how Messian got that material, yeah. it's just something, it's, it's, it's a real um, close encounter. And, right. I, and I find it so um, necessary for, you know, to yeah. understanding the piece and doing it justice. Yeah. So Elora and where else? Elora, West summer? Bend. West Bend. Mm -hmm. And um, I performed the Goldberg Variations. Uh -huh. And then um, uh, Festival de l'Anagier, yeah. I uh, repeated the old Scriabin program. Oh yeah. And then um, just uh, last week, two concerts in Paris Sound. Um, right. I performed the Beethoven Diabelli and the um, Emperor Concerto with the um, National Festival or uh, Orchestra okay. de Boris Brod. So Goldberg and Diabelli brings us to the immediate context for, for this conversation <laughs> at this sure. time, which is you're coming back September 27th to open Moordale Concerts right. season with a program, speaking of appetites for large programs, of the Goldberg Variations and the Deer Belly yeah. on the one, starting with the Goldberg. Starting with the Goldberg, yes. So you're going in chronological order. Absolutely. For the two. Um, Beethoven, do you think he knew the Goldberg Variations? or? Um, his whole life as a pianist began with Bach. Okay. I know that... Um, his teaching um, included the, um, all of the prelude and fugues of um, the Weltheimer Clavier. I wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't surprise me that he knew the Goldberg Variations um, inside out. Mm -hmm. 
Of course, his set of variations come from a totally different place altogether, but there are some similarities in the sense that um, both uh, center around dances. Mm -hmm. uh, there is humor in, uh, in both uh, compositions. Of course, they use humor differently. Uh, voices, mm -hmm. um, harmony, innovative harmonies. There is one variation that almost uh, each, uh, when you hear these two variations, one variation from the Goldberg and one variation from the Diabelli, it almost sounds like a 21st century work. Mm -hmm. The um, harmonies are so advanced and it still shocks the listener. Mm -hmm. Even if the listener heard it maybe around um, 10,000 times, mm -hmm. like yours truly, um, it always makes a huge impression and I'm bowled over by what I hear. And uh, mm -hmm. when, when I'm looking at the score and when I'm playing it, it just, it, yeah. um, it humbles me as an interpreter and brings, um, Always, I always want to bring an intimacy to um, both of those works. I really uh, want to get into the, the, uh, the marrow of it. Waterfall's a nice sized hall for intimacy. Yes. Um, you really are in close with, with your audience in that, in that room. Yeah. Um, the, so Goldberg Variations is, is centered around what, G major? The Diabelli's almost completely in C major. Completely it, in C major. Is it oh, no, 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 not completely. One, one movement, one no, movement? No, no, actually there's, um, um, th oh, let's see, <laughs> uh, three variations, uh, uh, three chronological variations that are C minor. Oh, okay. And then uh, the fugue begins in E flat major, which is, a, uh, which um, after a whole roller coaster ride of C major with maybe, a, uh, with one C minor variation, mm. And then you get that E flat major chord. It's just very dramatic. Mm -hmm. So why why are the two together in a, in one program? Um, speaking of um, Cana uh, um, Canadian summer, to me um, this is like a Canadian program for me because um, when I first heard the Goldberg Variations, mm -hmm. um, it was a recording of Glenn Gould. First or second? Um, the first. Yeah. And then. Um, Immediately after I heard the first, I heard the second. Mm -hmm. And then um, the first recording I heard of the Diabelli Variations, uh, Anton Querty. Uh -huh. so, uh, and he did that at Moordale himself just three summers ago, the Diabelli. Wow. I think it was three summers ago. He did a program where he did one Beethoven sonata, which I don't remember which one in the first half, and then he talked through the Diabelli variations, and then in the second half he played and then he, then he the, played a complete, the, the uh, complete variation variations in well. the second half of, oh, the, of the concert. So it's an audience that is going to be, um, I don't know what to say, close to the music. Um, and, and or close quite to that recently, memory. Close anyways. to that memory, yeah, which will bring another, another kind of, um, emotional texture yeah. to, to the room as well. Yeah. You did the Goldberg um, in Ottawa this spring. You that said. was my first um, performance of the Goldberg. I've lived with the Goldberg um, all my life and um, mm -hmm. the variations were in my fingers um, for quite a period of time. It was uh, quite a special um, hour mm -hmm. um, performing the Goldberg for the first time live and on Glenn Gould's piano, um, the piano that Glenn Gould would um, record on for quite a period of time, I think since mm -hmm. 1960. At the NAC. At the NAC, mm -hmm. and the piano was there. And uh, <laughs> not only was I playing the, um, uh, Glenn Gould's piano, there were portraits of Glenn Gould mm -hmm. all surrounding me. I was face to face <laughs> with Glenn Gould, so uh, it, gave, it, it gave me another excuse to connect with the audience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it a decent piano or is it a lousy piano? I mean, apart from the spiritual and everything else, what's it like as an instrument? It's a challenging piano. Okay. Brilliant sound, lots of colors. Yeah. It felt custom made and uh -huh. I think, well, because of my experience playing all kinds of different pianos, this yeah. was a um, a beautiful challenge for me and just being a part of um, that history right. inspired me a lot so uh, I was up to I, 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 
I hope I was up to the challenge. I felt up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. I felt um, that there was something spiritual that was going on mm -hmm. with the memory of Glenn Gould, the memory of that piano, and um, the uh, the audience being there. It was um, it was it was very special. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be challenging. You. Last time, I think the last time I heard one of your concerts was your Kerner One Day Sonata Thon, Sonata -thon which you've done since? Uh, yes, um, after my um, Kerner Sonata Thon, I've um, performed this project three times. Yeah. Um, second time was at the McCarter Theatre in Princeton, mm -hmm. the Mondovi Center in Davis, California, and um, just a few months ago in Dallas mm -hmm. with, um, at the AT&T um, Performing Arts Center. What do you get out of it that's different each time? Everything. Um, the audience is different and um, what is um, I f um, what is similar what what um, the chain that holds these concerts together are the audience members. They want mm -hmm. to go and hear the entire yeah. sonata-thon. They want to experience this. Mm -hmm. um, they want to experience um, all layers of Beethoven. Beethoven that they haven't heard of before. The humorous Beethoven, mm -hmm. the vulnerable Beethoven, the quirky Beethoven. Mm -hmm. The Beethoven that's hardly programmed in concerts. You always hear the Appassionata, you hear the Walstein. Yeah. You hear the, you know, the heroic Beethoven is, um, uh, you know, with good reason, the, the most popular. The core of the core of the, core the of audience it. repertoire. But yeah. you know, getting over that first impression of Beethoven, yeah. getting over that introduction, you want to know the you know you want to know everything about that person. You're already compelled, and you want to know more. And, and you do it chronologically, chronologically each time. Order. Are you tempted ever to tweak that? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did um, perform all the sonatas at Barge Music last summer, and it was it was um, over um, the course of four Sundays. Okay. So I did have to, um, um, I didn't play it in chronological order because yeah, um, I thought that sure. every every concert had to have the early, middle, and yeah, late. It's got to have an there. arc, otherwise, when it's a discontinuous experience like that, it's got to have an arc exactly. to each. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was so that, that was um, the one that, that was one time that I tweaked it. Mm -hmm. And you're doing uh, your your year coming up beyond Murdale is also got a lot of. Canadian to it as well this year, um, and I, I did my little bit of homework. You're doing Grieg with the Victoria Symphony and Tanya Miller. That's right. That's in more than one place, right? Yes. That's a tour. Uh, yes, Vancouver, Quebec City, Ottawa, mm -hmm. Toronto. Lovely. And then you're doing complete Beethoven concerti with two different orchestras. With um, the Kitchener Waterloo Symphony and okay. the um, Niagara Symphony. Oh, okay. And and that'll be happening uh, over, uh, over... The Kitchener the Waterloo um, Symphony um, will happen just one day before I come to Moordale. So um, the 25th and 26th, I do the um, five concerti, and then I take a ride from Kitchener to Toronto to do the Diebel, uh, to do the Goldberg and the Diebel. Two on the one day and three on the other, right? What order are you going to do them with for Kitchener? Uh, let me think. I think I'm doing what? I have to check it out. I know I'm doing three concerts, um, and the third concerto will be a matinee. Because, okay. you know, they're, they're <laughs> right. sorry, number three, but someone had to be a matinee <laughs> concert, and it was you. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I'm doing right. doing all of them. I, I I know the fifth closes one of those concerts. Yeah, I should I, should, I should check round. it out. This is bad. I'm sorry. You no, it's not bad at all. It's just, <laughs> but uh, no, I, it's uh, this, just this, a curious this, question. No, absolutely. For me. It's I'm curious too. One. I should check it out. Um, and you've recorded the Dear Belly. Uh, I recorded with, the Dear Belly. You That's haven't right. you haven't recorded any. You haven't recorded the Goldberg, obviously, because I've you recorded said the Goldberg this is yet. the first time you're engaging with it. Now you, you're also, you've also got a European, um, you're, I, I read that you're playing the Turangalila tur with, is that with Orchestre, Orchestre de, de Paris, Paris yes. and um, uh, Pavo, Pavo, Yarvi. Pavo Yarvi, who was also a Curtis graduate, did that's you right. know that? That's right, I did. Not at the same time, no. yeah, obviously. But, um, 
He was there, I think, in 60, 62. Have you worked with him before? Quite a number of times. We've yeah. I've done the um, Tarangalila Symphony uh, twice, um, once in uh, Cincinnati, and um, the last time was in Frankfurt. Uh -huh. Uh, we we worked together quite a uh, quite a lot of times, all with different repertoire. We performed Bach together. We performed mm -hmm. um, Ludoslavsky. We did um, uh, the first two Bartok and Cherry. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the Turangalila. We were talking about the the Les Oiseaux. I know. I, I thought in twenty ten you did. Turangalila in Detroit. That's right. That was the first time I did it with uh, Peter Ungin in the um, oh, Detroit Symphony. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's another one of these mountains to climb, is it? Ah, it... uh, it's probably <sighs> it's everything. It's romantic. I think it's it's very theatrical. Uh -huh. There are uh, sweeping gestures, extremely lyrical, very colorful, rhythmic. There are cadenzas in the piano. There are fermatas. There are rallentandos. Mm -hmm. um, there are moments where you see the lovers running to each other, and just like Hollywood, there is slow motion until they finally embrace. Mm -hmm. um, there are there are. It's a combination of. Um, the sacred and secular aspects of love. Mm -hmm. There, there, there's love making. There's, te there's terror. It's, it's a technicolor extravaganza. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful work, mm -hmm. eighty minutes long. And I can't. It's, it's um. It's decadent, it's pure, it's everything. He wrote it for Loyal, didn't he? Or, or he, did he know that she would perform it? Or she? Yes, um, she. Uh, he he knew that. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, I guess you, it's. You, a, you I did, guess it's. I guess it's official it. now that Messier yeah. wrote it for Lorio. I don't. I don't think it was. It, it, it was official at that time. Not at the time. Oh, but because okay. um, <laughs> you dig really deep into the history of the oh, stuff yeah. that you oh, yeah. that you perform, don't you? Oh yeah. None of it is. I mean, the things you t you're saying are not. It's not just. It's not just poetry. It's it's grounded in the 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 hard work of the research that you do. That is not just the it's not just the practice. It's the actual. Well, that's that's part of my practicing the research and yeah. trying to find out the um, seed to mm -hmm. this huge masterpiece. Um, yeah. I'm fascinated by this. I want I I wanted to know who was um, who it was written for. Mm -hmm. It was written for Kuzovitsky. Um, uh, with the Boston Symphony, and I think he was too ill to do the um, to do the premiere performance. Hmm. So Bernstein premiered it, huh. and I it's one of those moments in history where um, I guess similarly to the um, uh, symphonic dances of Rachmaninoff, you would have died to have had a commercial recording of Orm of Ormandy doing it with the Philly Orchestra right, right after that premiere. But um, similarly to the Slavonic da uh, symphonic dances, the Tarangalila Symphony did not get a, a, a great reception um, through critics. Critics thought it was vulgar. Mm -hmm. They, um, uh, there were the um, people that, um, the, the avant-gardists uh, thought uh, Messiaen was selling out because there were atonal moments as well as the tonal moments. Of course, they had issues with the tonal moments. Right. <laughs> and um, just the sweeping gestures, the romanticism, I think, um, uh, they, they thought um, it was... Um, uh, they had a problem with it for, uh, for, 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 that for, for, for that time. So I want to cycle around to, to a, another, uh, another topic. This is going to be one of these long-winded questions. Um, I remember, I remember when you were doing a Mozart concerti. I, I remember you talking once about um, about doing your own cadenzas to a number of the Mozart mm -hmm. concerti, and I found myself thinking about uh, these two, the Diabelli and the Goldberg, and the ex and just 
pondering on the, the analogy between sets of variations and what in, in jazz would be variations, you know, the, and wondering about the extent to which if a Beethoven or a Bach was riffing on this, whether those variations were committed to writing or whether potentially these would be just spun afresh when they were, were being done. So I guess the roundabout question is, is where, because in your own compositional practice, improvisation is, is much more part of what you do, whether whether there are insights from the one to the other. Do you get, do you get my question? The, these two sets of variations, you'd call them improvisations on a, on a theme, on you know, a theme. and you'd probably have the, the vocalist singing the, singing the waltz at the beginning of the Dear Belly, just I to see, I see what you're ground saying. it, and then you would have the virtuoso composer player just able to endlessly spin. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that, if you sense that, or if they are much more formal in their nature. <sighs> wow, that's a that's a good one. That's a very good question. I find both um, uh, both are um, essential to the interpretation of these works. The um, the free flow. Mm -hmm. um, I think the free flow happens when you perform it. The formal work begins before. And I think, you know, similarly to jazz, um, um, this may be a very presumptuous statement, but I know, uh, but it feels like with, even with jazz, there is a formal order. Mm -hmm. There is a, there is a destination that is very structured, mm -hmm. but it's that performance and um, what brings, uh, what gives that performance life is uh, feeding off from uh, whatever environment you're performing in. It could be uh, a jazz club, it could be a recording studio, wherever it is. It could be a, it could be a symphony hall. But it's that moment when, when all that formal work is done, the free flow begins when you perform. And I feel the same way about uh, with uh, those um, two variations. I've done the Goldberg um, three times this year. Bordeaux would be the fourth time, and every time I do it, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's but, never, it's never the same. But you don't mess with the notes. No. But, but you play with the, the the tempi and everything. You've got all these other tools available yeah. to you, but the notes are the the notes are the text. Yes, the notes. You know, the text is followed, but it feels like um, um, it's it's in every pore so that whatever happens, it feels like I'm improvising it. it, it I, I, mm. I know it 500% that whatever comes out, it's not like I'm um, reiterating something or reciting something. Yeah. It's just coming out. Discovered every time. Yeah, every yeah. time. Interesting. So what else is it your year? What else is going on? Frankfurt, I'm returning um, um, to perform a concert that combines um, two symphonies of um, of Beethoven with uh, works that are inspired by or could be inspired by uh, Beethoven the compo uh, um, Beethoven the composer or with those um, Beethoven symphonies. So I do one sonata. Mm -hmm. So the Frankfurt uh, the Frankfurt Radio Orchestra would, um, for example, perform. The pastoral symphony. So on that program, I'm doing the pastoral sonata right. as well as um, uh, legati etudes. Okay. So my uh, my um, my project for those two concerts was uh, was to combine um, a Beethoven sonata with a contemporary work in the fabric of um, the symphonies that would be played by that orchestra. So for the first concert, I'm doing the um, Pastoral Sonata and the Legatee mm -hmm. Etudes. The, I think I'm doing four of those. Yeah. And then um, for the second concert, I'm doing a, a Fantasia on um, the seventh, uh, um, the Ostinato of the Seventh Symphony, the second movement by John mm -hmm. Grigliano. And right. of course, the orchestra is doing the Seventh Symphony. And then I also do Les Adieux on that same program. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's a, a brilliantly structured program, and uh, I, I look forward to doing mm -hmm. that. 
Mm. Uh, as you mentioned, the national tour with the um, Victoria Symphony. Yep. Lots. Lots. Yeah. Last time we talked after the last time we talked after you had done your Kerner uh, marathon. Um, you, you mentioned Messian at the time. I, I get the sense that Scriabin has has entered your entered your picture uh, a bit as another uh, I won't say a new discovery, but uh, but another outlet. It is, and, a, it, it is a new discovery. It, uh, it's another sound world. It's another another world of music making, and uh, that 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 was a project that. Uh, I, I really had to go through, you know, taking the plunge and, you know, to another substance altogether and seeing, you know, and see what happens as soon as you come out. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Who's next? We'll see. Still... <laughs> you said that the last time yeah. as well, but it'll be true this time too. Yeah, it's, um, it's great. Every, uh, you know, every composer, well, there's so many composers yeah. and so many projects and what makes this life so exciting is that the discovery is endless. Mm -hmm. The road doesn't end, and it's um, you know, there's there's discovery galore. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. We'll Absolute see you pleasure again. as always. And it's a pleasure to thanks you. Thank you. And thank you for listening and watching. Bye bye.